BBLs are not killing people. Yeah. This pussy got power. Stay in it for hours. Yeah, I get what I want. He don't tell me no. These bitches, they hate me. These niggas, they love me. Hey y'all, what's pop lock and drop in? It's your girl Malaysia checking in with y'all. If you are new here, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and hit that notification bell. I'm going for a round two BBL here literally within a week's time. But this time I'm going to document my journey a lot differently than I did my first round. So my first round, I tried to document every single day, like day one, day two, day three. Obviously when you are coming out of surgery and here healing and all that it's kind of hard to do it day by day so this time I'm going to film me preparing for my BBL and then I'm going to while I'm there I'm just gonna mash it all up together and just do like a two-hour vlog for my round two BBL versus doing it day by day so my reasoning for getting my second BBL honestly is because I see the potential in my body I'm not going to get a BBL a round two BBL because I'm insecure because I'm sad because my head's down because I think there's something wrong with me I want to dead all those narratives the best way I can compare it because some people will say it's contradicting that I'm going to get my body done but I'm not insecure the reason why I want to dead that narrative is because you can't tell someone else how they're feeling about their body as to why they're going to go get something fixed. Just like people that work out. Everyone in the gym working out is not there working out because they're depressed, because they hate their body, because they're insecure. You know, of course some people are there for that reason because there's something on their body that they're insecure about and they're trying to fix it. There are people that work out in the gym that are there to blow steam. It's a part of their everyday life. It's habit. It makes them feel good. It brings their energy levels up. They just, you know, are trying to stay in shape. Not everybody is going to the gym to work out because they're depressed and because they hate their body because they're insecure, etc. Same for me. I'm not going for a round two BBL because I'm insecure, sad, or whatever. Honestly, the reason why I'm going for a round two BBL is because my body looks so amazing right now. A little bit of extra weight. When you go get a round, your first round BBL, you'll see or hear a lot of girls complaining that their body is not what they thought it was going to be. They didn't get their dream body. More times than any, it's because your first BBL L. Of course, some people go for the hips. You have hip dips. Me, I had really bad hip dips for my first BBL. That's my genetics. I naturally just have hip dips. When you go for a fat transfer, it's very hard for them to put fat on the bone and it stick. Hip dips are bone. So the fat that's on the bone will sometimes dissolve and you, your hip dips will come right back. So the reason why I'm going for a round two, it's not because I'm insecure or nothing like that. I, honestly, my body is banging. I look amazing. I see the potential in my body to get better. And that's really why I'm super excited because when I look in the mirror, I'm like, you know, I look amazing. So I can only imagine my doctor and how much better I'm going to look because I am 28. I'm going to be 29 here soon. And so this is like a little early birthday gift to myself. Shout out baby for investing in my body and offering to pay for my BBL. So that really came in handy. The fact that I'm not going to have to pay for it. Of course, I still paid for my flight and my recovery house. My boo thing definitely came through to look out for me for that. So it's kind of like a little early birthday gift. It was going to be to myself. Now that I'm going for my round two, the original shape that I wanted, the hourglass shape, I'm now going to get that. My body will take it this time. Basically, the shape will take. My hip dips came back. He's going to go in and fill those out. And I feel like this time around, it will take. I'm not, my booty is not going to be that much bigger, mainly because I don't have that much fat to transfer mainly going just to sculpt my my abdominal area it's going to be I'm not going to get any sketching or any abs or anything like that I have natural abs so it's just like a, a restart of course girls will say you know just go work out go to the gym etc you can't BBL your body from working out you can't grow hips from working out you know and of course I could go work out and shape my stomach or whatever but I don't want to and I don't have to I could do it how I want to and what I'm going to do is go for my round two BBL because I did drop weight back in October I was down to 145 pounds when I lost that weight my booty got really small it was almost I was like dang you know I can't just work out of course you do squats and all that stuff I was losing my BBL basically so the reason why I'm also going for the round two is that this time I can actually start over do right with my new body because my first BBL I didn't really start working out and doing the things that I was supposed to do and all 
also with my doctor, the doctor that I have, he's amazing. He doesn't have any blood on his hands. He's never killed anybody. And that's also why I'm really excited because I found my doctor again. I honestly lost his info. I couldn't find him for a while. Once I found his info, I literally just woke up one day and was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and go for my round two BPL. This was not planned. I literally just, I'm spontaneous when I do things. I'm going for my BBL for me because it's something I wanna do. At my age, I'm very proud of myself as far as where I'm at in life. You know, my credit, my businesses, me, my dogs, you know, dating, materials. I've done it all. So, you know, hung out with the most elite group of people, plugged in. I've done it all. There's not really anything in life right now that I want. Right now, it's just like, I'm patiently waiting for all of the investments that I've made to come back to me. Why not snatch my body up? I'm about to be 29. I want to go into my 30s looking snatched. It's my choice. It's my body. I'm not at all scared of dying or anything like that. And that's also another topic I want to get into. It doesn't irritate me, but it's baffling to see women in my comments stating things like, aren't you scared to die? You know, good luck. So many people are dying, etc. And I want to dead that narrative also that BBLs are killing people. BBLs are not killing people. Of course, the comments that I see, sometimes I'm just, it doesn't scare me out of anything, but I'm just like, why would you even say that? Why would you even put that negativity into the air? BBLs are not killing people. And non, non board certified surgeons are killing people. Women lying about how far along they are postpartum are dying. Women abusing their pain meds is the reason why they are dying and then women not making sure that they are healthy enough to go for surgery is the reason to why people are dying. BBLs have been around for a very long time since the 1960s. Yes it is one of the most riskiest surgeries because it is very invasive. The reason why I say BBLs are not killing people if you're perfectly healthy and you've never had any kids recently as far as like I would say postpartum you need to every doctor board certified will tell you you need to be at least one year to two years postpartum before you decide to go get any type of lipo, BBL, mommy makeover. Unboard certified surgeons are killing people. Healthy women, if you go get a BBL, the tool that they are using to suck out the fat from your stomach, there is a sharp end on that tool. And if the surgeon is not board certified and does not know what they are doing, that point at the end of the tool that they are using can puncture one of your lungs if the doctor does not know what they are doing. Another way you can die if you're perfectly healthy. I've heard stories of it, women being found dead in their recovery house because they overdosed on their Percocets. So if your pain tolerance is not high, you will need to moderate the amount of pain pills you are taking after your BBL. You cannot overdo it because you don't know how your body is going to react. Yes, you may feel like you're in so much pain and so sore, you're just gonna keep popping pills until you feel nothing. And that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna feel nothing because you're gonna be dead. You're gonna overdose. So moderate the pain pills that you are taking Another reason why women are dying from BBLs is because women are not waiting to go get work done after having a child. Ja Miss Jackie O, for example. Miss Jackie O's youngest child was 10 months old when she passed away. She, after 10 months of having a baby, she went and had surgery. First, that's, it's more than likely possibly the doctor's fault, but that but that depends. So a lot of the do these doctors get off and don't get charged with murder because more times than any on that sheet of paper they make you sign, they ask you about kids. So depending on if she lied to her doctor and said she was a year postpartum, or if he knew after you have kids, your womb has had so much trauma to it. That thing going in there, sucking all the fat out is just so much trauma adding on to what you already went through. I am not at all scared to go get a BBL and I people's comments are not affecting me either. I'm very strong minded and I also do my research. Sir. Like a lot of y'all know, drama always overshines success. So people's negativity in BBLs is obviously going to outshine the women who have actually got nice results and haven't had any complications such as myself. I, even whenever my first BBL, I left, I left four days after surgery because someone there had died. A girl died. And then guess what? Just made the news and everything in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. She had a six month old.
both sons. So whose fault is it? It's either her fault solely because she lied on her paperwork or it is the doctor's fault also, which I'm highly doubt the doctor knew that she was six months because the doctor was never convicted of her death. And of course, I'm not trying to blame someone who is no longer here, but when it comes to these kind of conversations, we have to be realistic. And I'm the one that's gonna say it because of course people don't wanna put blame on women, people that just passed away, but you're putting yourself at risk in a high mortality rate if you don't do your research. So after everyone found out, of course it was very somber in the hallways, everyone was ready to leave, I was ready to leave. Just It was my first BBL experience wasn't good as far as the recovery house goes. My doctor was great. But back to, let me stay on topic, I'm gonna get to all that here soon. Um, yeah, so that's what kills people. People lying, do doctors not being board certified and possibly puncturing lungs. Um, There was another story, a story of a lady being found in her recovery house, but after toxicology reports, she had over on Percocets. The BBL did not kill her. Um, the only other way a B BBL can kill you if you have a sickle cell trait. Most BBL facilities do blood work before your BBL. I'm going to Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. My I have to be in the country three days before my BBL because they have to send me off for blood work. So if you don't get blood work done, you should not be there. But they do blood work on you to make sure that you are healthy enough to have surgery. So if any, if mortality rates are only high because people are going into surgery being irresponsible, a BBL alone will not kill you. The pain for BBLs for me, because my tolerance is very high, on a scale of one to 10 is about a five. I was only sore. I wasn't in pain. And the other thing is just, you know, not being able to sit down, having to stand up while you pee, you know, but at the end of the day, it's worth it. I say so because if you go to a good doctor and I'm going to give y'all my doctor, you will have great results. In my first BBL experience, I did not give my doctor because I honestly just didn't want to. I felt like if you don't get the shape that I have, you're not going to blame me. If, you know, you didn't do your research as far as recovery houses, and all that goes you're not gonna blame me so and if you don't end up looking like how I look you're not gonna blame me so that's also why I didn't get my doctor out but since I'm going for my round two and I have had no complications for these two years after I'm post-op from my BBL I'm gonna go ahead and give y'all my doctor so I go to Dr. Mike Hell Jimenez he's amazing he has no blood on his hands He's never killed anybody. All of his work is amazing. Now, the reason why I go overseas to get surgery and I'm going to Dominican Republic is because here in America, they can only take out about eight liters of fat. I might be a little bit off, but overseas, they can take out all the fat, which is what you want. I know a girl that went and got lipo. She went to Miami, she came back. She looks the same. All she, cause she had so much fat on her belly that the eight liters he took out was not enough. The eight liters he took out literally just flattened her stomach. He didn't, wasn't able to hourglass, shape her, or anything. But the, if she would have went to Dominican Republic, they would have snatched her up. They would have sucked all that out. She was naturally skinny. She already has a big butt from gaining all that weight. They would have took all that fat out and she would have looked so snatched. So that is also why I go overseas to get surgery because they can take out more. And the doctors over there are just as good as in America. And then also it's a lot cheaper. But I love my Kelly Menas, and then my recovery house that I decided to stay in this time is Luxury Recovery Dominican Republic. I love their packages. They have three different packages. They have a three bedroom where there's three beds in that room, meaning that there will be three girls in that room healing. There's a two bedroom where there's two beds in the room, meaning only two girls will be in there healing. And then there's a private room where you'll be by yourself. I booked a private room, which is around 1300. And then my surgery was 5,500. My flight was was about 11.50. I'm really excited for my recovery house because it's gorgeous. They have a pool, they have a nice view. It looks like it's in a condo high up, 24 hour on-site doctor, 24 seven on-site nurses. It's all inclusive, meaning you don't have to worry about any of your meals. They provide three free massages. The Most doctors recommend you getting 10, so I don't mind paying for my other 10 massages. With my flight, I actually booked through Spirit. Well, girls and gents because I know, I know guys are getting BBLs too. I'm a 
all for it. If, do what you want to do. I'm flying Spirit mainly because the flight is cheaper and honestly I don't need to be, it doesn't need to be that fancy. I'm going there, it's fancy enough when I get there. I'm simply, I need, it's simply transportation. I'm flying Spirit for my flight to Dominican Republic. You stop at one place, obviously you stop in Miami first and then you go to Dominican Republic. I didn't choose any seating for my flight there. I really didn't care about where I sit on my way there. But on my way back from Spirit, obviously I reserved the front row seats for myself because last time, girl, my first BBL, I did not do any real research. So the things that you need to know if you're going overseas to go get surgery is one, you need to know that you need to bring cash. It Most of the doctors out there, my doctor only takes cash and it's because after you heal and your swelling goes down, women will literally try to do a chargeback for their whole surgery because their body didn't look how they dreamed it would look. It never turns out how you think it is. You feel me? But that's okay because it could still look really good. It's just not what you thought. So that's why they only take cash, which I completely understand. My first time, I had my card. So I was steady having to go to the Western Union to get money and girl, it was a hassle. It was really a hassle because I could have saved time if I would have did research. And then two, I didn't call my phone company before I left out of the country. So therefore, when I got there, I didn't have any service. So I was constantly having to use people's Wi-Fi, WhatsApp, and it was just, it was horrible. And the third thing I didn't do research on is my recovery house. Some of you may or may not know, my last recovery house that I stayed at, Sea Lily Recovery House, basically held me hostage. Girl, they, they took one of my luggages out of the car. Basically, right after I got out of surgery, one of the ladies approached me and told me that I owed them a thousand dollars right after surgery after I get to the recovery house doped up on all these meds and they didn't realize I'm not green I'm very stand-up I'm not a stupid girl I remember specifically asking them before in before any surgery did I owe them any money and they told me no so how right after I get out of surgery do I owe y'all money it's not making any sense so whatever I ended up leaving blah, blah, blah. I'm not gonna get into the whole story it is in my video so girl go click on it and watch it so I didn't do research on my recovery house it wasn't what I wanted I was in a room with the hella girls like I was like it was like four or five girls in that room this time I made sure I did research like well it's not even that I had to do research because since I went through it all before I kind of know what to expect and know what I did wrong and know how to fix it with this time a lot of girls go out of the country to get their bodies done by themselves that's the whole point of getting a recovery house so you're technically not having to go through it alone when I went for my first BBL all the girls that were there with me they were all there by themselves only like one girl in the recovery house had her man with her so you're not ever going to go through it alone if you have book a recovery house or some people book hotels and get a private nurse. I personally just wanted to be in a place where I know there's going to be doctors and nurses because I'm mentally prepared for it, physically prepared for it, but I just know what to expect. So I know I'm going to be, you know, sore. I know my stomach's going to be looking crazy after the first, first month. But those are things that some people don't know that when they go out the country to bring money, to call your phone company first, to do the research on your recovery house. I'm talking about look at all all the reviews don't just book somewhere because it's cheap because you will get what you pay for and then also Dominican Republic the American dollar goes really far so you can get you something you can get doctors and all that of substance if you just do your research and spend the right coin as far as extra expenses you won't really need to bring too much extra money other than you know your flight money your doctor money and your recovery house money but you will need to bring your money for your stage to Faha your doctor is supposed to provide you with your stage one faha that's the faha that they put on you right after surgery but of course your swelling will go down so you will eventually need to get into your stage two faha to keep you compressed so other than that you need to spend money on a stage two faha i would honestly recommend to bring just a little extra cash for tipping people tipping your drivers just tipping people if you need anything or if you're going out of your way to ask for things it's very courteous because the people out there are not not always doing really good with uh, money. So next I'm going to just read some of the notes that I took as I was doing research on BBLs. But augmentation actually dates back to the 1960s. Brazilian plastic surgeon Ivo Pitengui is widely credited as the creator of the Brazilian butt lift. Though the technique built upon decades of innovations in its field, the surgeon founded the world's first plastic surgery training center in Brazil, where he pioneered what became known as the Brazilian butt lift and taught surgeons all over the globe. He published a paper on early buttock lift surgery, which removed excess skin and tissue to correct sagging. He performed facelifts, 
tummy tucks, and other procedures on rich, famous, and royal clientele. Sadly, he died of a heart attack after passing the torch for the Olympic Rio Games. The icon and beauty-obsessed Brazil attracted celebrities. The 90-year-old changed lives of many and wished to make plastic surgery accessible to all Brazilians. He served less well-off patients for free. From there, the practice traveled north and exploded once pop culture began to shed its preference for the tits on a stick silhouette and started to revere stars like Jennifer Lopez and Nicki Minaj. The method became more popular in the 1990s after New York City plastic surgeon Sidney Coleman published a series of papers outlining standardized procedures. Here are some answers to the questions I'm sure a lot of people have. What causes embolisms from BBLs? Where do most BBL deaths occur? Can you survive a fat embolism from a BBL? How do you prevent fat embolisms after fat transfer? What is the biggest complication of a BBL? I included some articles to back up my statement that board certified surgeons and experienced surgeons are not killing people. A lot of deaths are coming from surgeons who are not experienced or surgeons that are overpopulated, meaning that they perform too many surgeries in one day. I also included articles from women that are passing away after giving birth and not waiting the amount of time that they should have before going to get a surgery. You can also research your doctor to see if he has any deaths in his clinic or has performed any botched surgeries. Do your research ladies before you get surgery and I hope this helped you out and made you feel better. In the summer of 2019, the Florida Board of Medicine issued the first rule in the nation to regulate the BBL, stating that any doctor who injects into the muscle can lose their medical license. It's been a serious wake-up call to surgeons in Florida, a state responsible for 60% to 70% of all BBLs performed in the U.S. The BBL has been going through the same unfortunate learning curve, but it's starting to get a lot safer. Dr. Herluff Lund, a board-certified plastic surgeon in St. Louis, Missouri, and past president of the Aesthetic Society agrees that the BBL is trending in a positive direction. Wherever there's a death, he explains, the task force sends a team of doctors to oversee the autopsy. Just a few years ago, we were flying doctors back and forth across the country every couple of weeks, he says, but we haven't had to fly anybody recently. In more measurable data, a study published in PRS in 2019, the results of a survey sent to 56 155 board certified plastic surgeons in Brazil estimated the BBL mortality rate to be around 1 in 20,117, noting that the risk of death was 16 times greater when the fat was injected intramuscularly, meaning in the muscle, lending further support to the BBL safety. ASERF repeated in 2017 global survey of board certified plastic surgeons who are members of ASAPS and and ISAPS since we dropped the bomb back in 2017 saying there's something going on with the procedure. We've been working to educate surgeons in hopes of improving the BBL mortality rate. So is BBL surgery dangerous? Bottom line, all surgeries have their risks. And while BBLs can be dangerous, they're getting safer, especially when they're executed by highly trained and well-informed board certified plastic surgeons. Studies like those outlined above are elucidating the tools and guidelines needed to remain in the subcutaneous plane when injecting fat in the buttocks. And this has been a game changer for the procedure. And then I also did a BBL Q&A on my page. So I'm going to go through and answer some of the questions that some of you ladies have asked me. Titanic Valdosta asked, are you still going to do a second breast augmentation? I remember you mentioning a while ago. And if so, please document so we can follow along. No, I'm not going for a second bra breast augmentation. I originally wanted to, but then girl, every time I take my shirt off, I just look at my boobs like, why would you? No, I won't be going for another breast augmentation. Disciples Voice 9104, will this be your last round or will you get more done in the future? Also, are you afraid of the st statistics that this is one of the most dangerous surgeries to have and that more people are dying from it? This will definitely be my last round of BBL in the future. After, who knows, I might get lipo, I may not. But as far as BBL specifically, this will be my last round. I am not afraid of the statistics that this is one of the most dangerous surgeries. 
surgeries obviously because I've done my research and my doctor is amazing and more people are not dying from BBLs. People have been dying from BBLs. It's not like people just started dying and everyone's just dying nowadays. The internet is very profound. The internet is a new thing. The internet was not around in the 1960s for people and influencers to share their stories and for reporters to share how many people have died from BBLs. The internet just started. The internet's massive impact, the deaths and the negative things are being brought to light and are easily able to reach many people. Just like black men getting shot by police. Black men have been getting killed by police. It's not like it's something that just happened. You know what I mean? Of course it was being filmed and being caught on camera and being put on the internet. So now it's it was looking like so many people were dying at the hands of police just as recently. But these things have been going on. So no, I'm not at all scared, worried about people's false narratives from them not doing research and from them just soaking in the information that they hear. Michelle Fier Fiera 26, where are you going to get it done? I'm going to Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Lauren Robertson 6796, how much did it cost? It's 5500. Brit H 2237, how much more fat are you transferring? Why did you choose this age instead of younger? What is the drive or motivation behind getting the surgery? Do you want surgery throughout your life or until you have kids? The fat that I'm transferring is all the fat that I have in my belly. Why did I, why did you choose this age instead of younger? I got my first BBL when I was 27. When I was 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, BBLs weren't a thing. Of course they were going on. Everyone was like, you can only imagine how many people got one. What I mean by a thing is it wasn't in the media as much as it is now. So 23, I got my boobs done. And honestly, my petite body, I mean, that was good enough. Like I looked amazing. I was, I've always been in a great shape. So being petite, I guess was what, how I was when I was younger. I wasn't worried about getting a bigger butt or none of that. COVID came around from 26 to 27. I didn't get a BBL because it's popular, because it's in style. I got a BBL because I was introduced to the idea that all the weight that I had gained over the COVID two years, that I could transfer that fat to my butt. My butt wasn't that big before my BBL, so I was like, why not? So honestly, that's the reason why I decided to get it this, it this age, because this is the age that I've decided to get surgery. Even with tattoos, I didn't have tattoos or any of that till I was 26. I didn't start touching my body until I was 26 years old. And that's another reason why I say people can preach they love natural all they want, but they're only saying that because they don't have any money to go get anything done. I didn't have the money to go get my boob job. Someone gave me the money. Same with my BBL and my teeth. I didn't I didn't have the money before. I was, oh, I'm natural, all this stuff. The moment I got my $40,000, my, my first $41,000 check, I went and invested in my body. So that's another reason. Like, just because you don't have the money to get something done doesn't mean talk bad about it because we all know once you get the money, you're gonna go get something done. Look at Mulatto, look at Tokyo Jets, look at all these artists who were praising themselves being natural, but the moment, moment they got a real check, they went and invested in their body. That's also why I have the money to do so, so why not? What is the drive or motivation behind getting your surgery? I've seen the potential in my body, seeing how amazing my body is and knowing that it's only going to get better. That is my motivation. Do you want surgery throughout your life or until you have kids? As far as getting surgery throughout my life, no, there's not really any surgeries that I thought about getting other than a BBL and a breast augmentation. I got my boobs done already. I've already had a BBL. I'm going for round two. As far as any other type of procedures, I've never thought about it. And then also after I have kids, I will not be getting any type of surgeries as far as an invasive surgery. I will not put myself at risk from being taken from my kids and I will not put my kids at risk from losing their mother, especially since I know the mortality rate for new mothers. So after I have kids, girl, I'm gonna love my body and I'm pretty sure at that point in my life, my genetics are really good. My mom looks amazing after having four kids. So I'm not really at all worried about what my body will look like after having kids either. Shy Girl NY1 says, the way things are happening nowadays, please don't go through it alone. I won't be going through it alone. I'm gonna have a team of people helping me recover. Yeah, girl, I didn't really get too many questions which is understandable because there are so many videos out about people's BBLs and Q&A's so if you do your research honestly most of the questions that you have to ask they will be answered. I feel like this is more so about my experience, my outlook, and my opinion on BBLs. Just be supportive. 
ask questions. You know what I mean? Actual legit questions, not are you scared to die? So, and that's also why I decided to give y'all my doctor because if you do decide to go get a BBL in the Dominican Republic, I've provided you with a doctor who has no blood on his hands, no death on his hands. He does an amazing, amazing job. So that way, sis, I done hooked you up. So that way I know if you're gonna go get a BBL, you are in good hands. And that luxury recovery house, I'm gonna give y'all a review on it after I have my stay there. I, so far, love what I've found, but I can't give too in-depth of how they treat people considering I have never stayed there before. But other than that, I really don't have too much more to shine light on or to talk about. I feel like I pretty much went over all the things that I wanted to get off my chest for my surgery as far as when, what, where, why, and how. You feel me? The pros and the cons. I never have had any complications with my BBL, so I'm super excited to go for this one. I'm just excited to, you know, get out and blase baba. I'm going to watch my old video of my BBL supply list and see those things that I'm gonna that I'm going to need to get because everything that I took with me for my first BBL came in handy, girl. People were asking me for my stuff, trying to use my stuff, and that's also why I got a private room because I am not letting anyone borrow my stuff. I'm not letting anyone borrow my pain pills. I'm not any letting anyone borrow my phones, my pads, my nothing. No one is borrowing nothing from me. And that's also why I got a private room is because I'm going to be filming and I don't need anybody saying, oh my God, I don't want to be filmed. You know what I mean? So that's also why I just got my own private room and I'm going to start preparing for my BBL. More than likely here in a second, I'm going to get on Amazon and start ordering all my stuff. And that's about it. I got my hair done for my, well, I guess this was my little early birthday gift to myself. This is She's Happy Hair. Girl, I spent $800 on this hair, which I really, it's worth it. I'm going to go get my nails cut off before I go out of town. I'm gonna get, I don't think I'm gonna get any acrylics on them. I'm honestly just gonna get them chopped off, soaked off, and just get a nice white or black polish, gel polish on them. I might get a little acrylic and do a little, I'm lying, girl, I'm gonna do acrylic short. I'm gonna do some stubbies, short black stubbies, not white, cause I just don't like white. It gets dirty so fast. So yeah, girl, other than that, I'm ready to to a go and I hope I shined a light on some of the things that some of you women and gents were scared of as far as BBLs and just you know I hope I gave y'all a little bit of info on the whole BBL all right but other than that girl you already know scared feet don't eat but I hope I shined some light on the pros and cons of BBLs and some things that you need to know if you're going out of the country and I hope I plugged y'all into a, a doctor that y'all can feel safe with a recovery house that you could look into other than that girl I gotta start preparing for my trip you already know scared feet don't eat and a closed mouth won't get fed I'm gonna check in with y'all soon <laughs> Hey y'all, it's your girl Malaysia. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Don't forget to subscribe so you can be one of the first to be notified when I drop a new vlog. Don't forget, scared feet don't eat and a closed mouth won't get fed.